Hey guys, it's Isaac again, and welcome to part two of how do I overcome porn or addiction and lust. Um, if you haven't seen part one, I encourage you to check that out in the link above and below. That video really give you some context to our conversation today. You got to start there because that's when we talk about the real foundational issues of, look, why do we turn to porn and why and how do we change from our, our heart desire? Because that's where it is, right? It's the heart. We need to change our heart. And that's how we truly overcome pornography. But today I want to talk a little bit about some practical tips and how to overcome pornography. And even if you don't struggle with this, I think this video will be helpful for you to understand some other people's struggles and to help them out as they're battling through this issue. Um, you know, as I was thinking a little bit more about this topic this week, I think as we some of the reasons we turn to pornography or cheap, you know, this kind of cheap substitute for um, a God given um, desire, um, we turn to it because I think it promises us things that it actually can't deliver on. You know, it promises us some kind of connection, but it delivers us with loneliness. If you've ever you know, partake in, in pornography or watch pornography, you know, it's like, oh, this is, this feels good. This is great. I feel satisfied. But at the end, oh, wait a minute. I'm left with a sense of disconnection and loneliness. It promises connection, but leaves us with disconnection. It promises a sense of satisfaction, but it ultimately leaves us with guilt, right? And so I just want to convey that to you. If you're still struggling with this kind of, I don't know if I want to give it up or I don't know if I really want to turn from it. Listen, not only does it grieve God, but it deliver, it, it, it tells you things. It promises you things that it cannot deliver on. and does not deliver on. That was just one quick thought that I had before we go into these practical tips. So if you've gone on, gone on to any kind of video about, overcoming pornography, you'll probably hear something or read books, you'll probably hear something like get accountability. And I think that's important, right? We don't want to miss out on accountability. And what is accountability? Well, there's in-person accountability. If you have somebody that you know, maybe a friend, maybe a pastor, maybe somebody in your small group or Bible study that you can say, hey, look, I'm struggling with this. Can you keep me accountable? Can I give you updates on what's going on? In my life and can you ask me questions in, like digging questions in order to really find more about my life keep me accountable because i want to i want to stay away from this i want to overcome this but i can't do that alone because what often happens is that when we're when we're kind of consumed with this kind of addiction and you see this with people that are addicted to drugs or alcohol or whatever it is it's kind of this kind of isolationism they isolate themselves when they want to partake and they because because there's that shame associated with it right so if we can get that out of out of the the dark basement into the light and say hey can you help me with this that is a important step right that conversation is really tough if you've ever asked somebody to be um, your accountability partner or whatever that is a tough conversation because you're basically admitting look i can't do it on my own and for us as humans that's a really tough thing to admit but it's essential that you do in the last video i talked about hey we can't do it alone we need god in this video i think it's important that we understand i can't do it alone i need other people around me right to help me out in this somebody once said your greatest accountability partner is God. And I think that's totally right. That's totally true. Um, we need to be accountable to God, right? Because even when we have an accountability partner that we're talking to, we can hide things from them if our heart isn't changed. We can tell them things that aren't true. We can keep things from them. But at the end of the day, God's going to see us. You know, that's who we truly are. Somebody once said, um, a person's character is not defined by the person that they portray to be on the outside or they show themselves to be on the outside. It's what, what do they do when they're alone? That's when true character comes out. So who are you when the lights are off? So I do think 
in-person accountability is important. Having somebody there that you can talk to, that you can tell things that you're struggling, tell that you can really say what you're struggling with and they can help you through that. A wise Christian, maybe a mentor that can help you through that. And there's different um, resources that you can use. I really encourage you, if you're struggling with pornography or lust of any kind, I encourage you to check out this book, Finally Free by Heath Lambert. In the book, he offers a lot of important um, tips and, and tools that you can use in combating and overcoming pornography. And I think an important aspect to talk about is that if even if you're not like totally addicted to pornography, accountability is so much better earlier rather than late. And that's what this book actually, an important part of this book actually talks about is this idea that, look, if you have any kind of struggle in this area, which, which most people do, it's better to have somebody that is kind of checking up on you. Well, it's, it's kind of manageable as opposed to it just getting really, really bad, getting totally addicted, and then all of a sudden calling for backup. And I think we do this in a lot of areas of our lives. We don't go to the doctor until we're really sick. We hold off, we're like, oh, I'll be fine. Then we go to the doctor. We don't go to counseling until we feel like we're really messed up because it's like, oh, just a few things, it's all good. But I think it's important that we take these proactive steps in some cases to say, look, this is important. I need to get this in check. Because the thought life, the thought life, I need to get that under control. It's not just about what we do, but it's about what we think. God cares about the thought life. I think another tip or tool that you can kind of utilize in your battle to overcome pornography is I would encourage you to find out the, the circumstances of your life that really, um, preempt you going to these different escapes so let me let me kind of put that in an example if i've had a really bad day maybe i'm really tired i'm exhausted maybe i'm a little bit frustrated where are you gonna go maybe some people go to you know watch some tv just unwind relax maybe for you that's a really tempting time when you're alone you've just been working or you're exhausted and you're like oh maybe i can maybe i can watch a little bit watch a little bit and that can be a tempting time for you to slip back into pornography and if that's you I want to just say look identify that situation maybe whether it's late at night or early in the morning in the afternoon whatever whenever it is and whatever you're feeling in that in that circumstance identify that feeling identify that circumstance identify the things that you're saying to yourself when you're justifying that this is an okay thing saying oh look I need this or, oh, it's just a little bit, it won't hurt anybody. These things that you tell yourself that justify this being okay, what are those things? And when you start realizing, start becoming self-aware and you start saying, oh, wait a minute, am I telling myself that again? Am I telling myself those lies again? Am I in the situation when I'm feeling I'm tempted? What can we do to get out of that? What can we do to get ourselves in in people's eyesight, maybe I can go out, maybe I can hang around family, maybe I can, um, you know, different things like that. Maybe I can write scripture verses down. All these things can be helpful, but it's about becoming self-aware that you can understand when you are most tempted, that when you are in those situations, that you can be aware of that and you can turn from that, that you can ask God, God, help me in this situation. Help me. I need your help now. That you can open up your Bible and you can say, God, please just quiet my heart. God, please take these temptations away from me. Help me flee these things. Because it's a tough thing. It's going to be a battle. It's going to be the battle of your life and it won't go away. And that's the tough thing is because you can't, you can't just kind of get, get over it and then never have to struggle with it again. Because the world we're living in is immersed in this kind of sensuality, pornographic images, all this kind of stuff that we have to struggle with, but we have to be battling with it consistently. And so this is not one thing fixes all, like you can just do this and then you're just done. This is an invitation into a battle, a battle for your life. And it's not gonna be easy. 
you're going to struggle. You're going to fall down. But what God asks you to do is get up and follow him again. Will you do that? For me, it's a constant, it's a constant battle. It's a constant battle of saying, no, I choose God's design. I choose what God wants for me over what my sinful heart desires, over my fleshly desires, over my mentality of, oh no, give it to me now. I want that satisfaction now. And saying, no, you know what? I want to honor God in this. And that's a struggle. It's always going to be a struggle. But I want to just encourage you that there is freedom from pornography. Go to Christ. Ask him for his help because you're going to need it. You can't do this alone. Thank you.